we can't allow any further delay. Yeah. He's making himself but welcome. Is what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, guys, we have, well, about a week or so left in the month of May. Uh, it's been a relatively uneventful month. I think we've had five days of measurable rain. Um, we're running behind schedule in terms of rainfall. Um, we've had quite a bit of heat for the month of May, mm. nine days at and above 80 degrees. Uh, last Sunday was when that streak came to an end and we cooled down. Since then, we've had highs in the mid to upper 60s. And officially today, we're back into the 70s. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know how else to describe it, Mark. Uneventful? What are, what are your thoughts? Or maybe... Well, I'll say, Jeff, as soon as you said uneventful, I'm like, what? We had all these record highs and, and record warm lows. <laughs> okay. But I see what yeah. you're saying. Like from, a, from a sensible weather, as we call it, like, did things happen in the sky? Very little, no. You're right. It's been kind of dry, that's for sure. I was just looking at You guys keep talking amongst yourselves. I'm going to look at these <laughs> stats on um, Portland rain because, you know, another dry May. Oh, here they are. Another dry May, and we've only had one wet one wet May last year in the last, what do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about the last 10 Mays. So we've had a whole bunch of dry Mays. There doesn't seem to be a long-term trend up or down like 100 years, but um, only one wet one in the last 10 Mays, I think. Yeah, and I was unusual. looking at that graphic yesterday, and I think if you're looking at the one that I think it went back to like 2014, there's only one, maybe two that have less rain than we've had this month. So it's right down there with one of the yeah. driest we've had in recent history. Not the driest, but no. really close. I remember 1992, the first my first forecasting summer. Uh, I showed up and uh, I mean got out of college in 91. And 91, 92, we had a drought year up and down the west coast, and there was a tenth of an inch of rain that whole month. It was like wow. summer for most of May. Um, I think summer turned out turned out pretty normal, but um, yeah, that was a really dry May. I think that's our driest on record there. Yeah. Did it dump at the Rose Festival that year? It did not. It was warm and dry. <laughs> Speaking of, it's starting mm -hmm. Friday, right? That's right? The big kickoff. Oh, I will yeah. be down there with the, the clowns. I get to lead the – well, I don't lead the parade. <laughs> but um, no. we have all the clowns down there. Angel, the clown prince, he'll be there. And uh, the, the, the fun center opens up. The city fair, I'm sorry. It's called the city fair. And I get to go on the rides. It's always fun and eat the food and charge the boss for that, if I remember to get <sighs> the receipts. What you're not you big into is it like a big like turkey drumstick like that kind of thing or <laughs> no it, it's more like um oh maybe cotton candy but now i think i'm past that just probably a good burger um okay yeah. maybe some ice cream i you know ice cream sandwich that sort of stuff corn All dog right. uh yeah I don't know. why not yeah deep fried yeah. not some so you have to get tummy. something deep fried yeah. otherwise are you really at a fair Le elephant's ears do they have elephant's ears oh my gosh yes that's what i want there I you want go an elephant ear that's what I want. So, I yeah, weather looks great for that Friday, right? Looks good. So May is going to continue pretty mild. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that being said. It's so quiet. Why is everybody quiet? <laughs> well, because there's so much to talk about, right, in the month of May. You know? That's right. You know? um, no, but you're right, though. It has been eventful in terms of the heat. We did have that unusually warm stretch. We're running – at last check, we were running over six degrees above average for a typical May. Um, and that number may actually go up considering that we're going to be climbing into the low to mid eighties for a couple of afternoons. And this time of year, we should only be in the low seventies. Um, so, it, and the daylight hours are certainly getting longer. Um, this morning I was kind of looking at our sunrise tracker and, uh, the sunrise this morning was at five thirty one in Portland tomorrow, Friday or Thursday, actually the 25th, it'll be at five thirty, And then from there on out up until, uh, I believe july 9th it'll be before 5 30 and from june 14th to june 21st that's the earliest time that our sunrise occurs uh, so up until the summer solstice so um it's like we're entering that prime time that people love where we just have an incredible stretch of daylight <laughs> yeah. um, you know what my wife hates she just hates it when i say i just said this last weekend just to be annoying I go, oh, it's only three weeks until, you know, when and at what time that is in about three weeks or so. She goes, what? I go, well, it's the longest day of the year. She goes, oh, yeah. And I go, and you know what follows that? She's like, don't even don't even start. <laughs> 25 years later, she because I used to say, oh, it all gets darker after that. Right. Yeah. She doesn't nope. like that. Yeah. Mine doesn't either. And I've yeah. done that too. Yeah. Um, that's that. And that ultimately means that our weather is eventually going to get more eventful again. You know, and that's a true weather nerd speaking. 
there you go. Eventually, but first three months of pretty pretty quiet weather. Yeah, you know, but very of, reliable. You know, for regular people, not for us, but for regular people, this is regular. really nice. <laughs> yeah, because we're kind of abnormal. That's why we're doing a weather podcast. Um, yeah, so for regular people, it's just this is very dependable, nice weather. Like just today, I was outside doing some stuff, and I thought, oh, that's nice that I know that there's no significant rain coming up for a week. West of the Cascades, I can like leave some stuff out or work on this project, maybe on Saturday or do this on Sunday, or I can take a run on this day and it's fine. You know, we don't have to say, oh no, it's going to rain for the next 10 days at least. You right. know, can I uh... or actually put away my furniture, outdoor furniture covers. They're actually like tucked away for the week. Wow. Nice. The big summer move, the big, big dry season move. Yeah. yeah. We just got our patio furniture in. So I'm all about doing the backyard Ooh. projects right now. I just yeah. spray painted some PVC pipe to put up some patio lights. Yeah. Oh yeah. PVC. You can't go wrong with PVC pipe. <laughs> yeah. Yep. We're going to have to talk about that because we're doing patio lights in ours. I want to hear your process sometime because we've been just I'll, looking, Pinteresting how to put yep. up our patio lights. I'll let you know. I'll let you know if my method works. We'll okay. find out. <laughs> kind of prepping for those later, later evenings. When I think about like summer solstice and those really late evenings and earlier sunrises, I think of, okay, and I'm not trying to be super nerdy, but I really do think of this. Noctilucent clouds. You only can see those. Oh, yeah. A certain time of year. <laughs> Katie, have you ever seen those? Mm -mm. I was wondering if you had ever seen them in central Oregon because you guys have so much less light pollution out there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But no. it, you really only see those right before sunrise and right after sunset, like right around the summer solstice. And we've seen mm -hmm. them. I've seen them several times while I've been here. I'm sure, Mark, you've seen them countless times we've got time lapses saved with them in there Ooh, i want to see them yeah me too if you look, look under like. scene our scene names which is the way our weather system works folks uh there's i have it as noctilucent some i think a past example or mm. two i'll have to definitely yeah. take a look at that there's a graphic for everything those i know are, that's what i'm learning if, if you're just if you don't know what those are those clouds are some of the if not i think they are the highest elevation clouds that you can see with the naked eye um so clouds form or uh, ba they form basically from tiny little um, particulate matter. They, water droplets form on a par particle of some sort. And these form on stardust from what I understand. Um, am I right, Mark? Yeah, I, I think so. And, and that the name Noctilucent means night shining clouds. And basically they're so high up that after the sun has gone below the horizon, it's, you know, half kind of twilight or it's almost all the way dark. There's a bluish cloud out there. To oh, the I, west, I'm looking west. at images right now yeah. to see what they look like. Yeah. <laughs> so it's great. always going to be right after in like the hour and a half after oh. sunset. I've noticed right around 10 PM for us during that uh, 10 to 10 30 PM is when we've tended to see them around the beginning of our newscast or so uh, mm. during the solstice. So that would be what an hour, hour and a half after sunset. Yeah. And same thing for you, Jeff, since I'm not awake in an hour and a half before sunrise in June, you are you know, what's that? 3 AM, 3, 3 30. Yeah. Yeah, usually it happens around. So I, I don't know off the top of my head when the sun rises around the summer solstice, but um, it's 521, I believe, actually. So yeah, 4, 430 is when usually we end up seeing those. So I'll it's get amazing. to see them on the weekend. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully. And it's kind of random. They just kind of randomly appear like Aurora, but they're more common than the northern lights for sure. Yeah, you'll want to uh -huh. obviously point like the Shriners Children's Cam off toward the sunrise an hour and a half, two hours before. Oh. And I do that anyway because I love watching it rise. <laughs> so that'll be yeah. good. Okay. Our, a brand new our, day. Our, our, our ultimate tool was the Skyline camera, which has been down for a while. That's the, our camera that sits on one of the communi communication towers above the West Hills. Um, hopefully we get that back. I heard a rumor that that could be coming back, um, but I don't want to. I hope so. I heard that back in March, so I'm not sure. I did. <laughs> I think I asked again, and, and I didn't get a good answer on that one. We're, we've got a couple, two or three cameras that are having some some minor technical issues, so uh, Katie, to be determined is, what happens. Katie, you haven't been here to like use that camera, but it is the best because is you, it? Can get, oh. you can get a 360 view anywhere, or like over the metro area, and it is like high def, and it is you can it's catch so some crazy good. things. Yeah. yeah, it's the highest weather cam in the city, right? Yeah, 1,800 yeah. feet. Oh, okay. Well, we need to get it back. Maybe we can squeaky wheel it and get it up there soon. 
Well, somebody's got to climb up. That's part of the problem. I'll do it. I'm not afraid of heights. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You're not approved, Katie. And neither am I. <laughs> Nobody on this little zoo, uh, the call here on this podcast is approved to climb that tower. Hey, I was going to say that just the general weather pattern, we talked about how it still looks dry for another week, right? Um, I was just making the forecast. Camilla, I think I've got it there. It's about it's about half finished, the forecast. But um, so we kind of have this uh, weak ridging that's developing over, kind of pushing towards the Pacific Northwest. So Things are warming for these next two days, as you said, Jeff, uh, Thursday and Friday. Mm -hmm. And then there's quite, a, there's quite a marine push on Saturday morning. So actually, I did swap the low temps. I'm going to go – I'm sorry. I swapped the high temps, the coldest high temp. I made Saturday cooler than Sunday now. Hopefully, nobody like you know gets mad about that mm -hmm. since we're all on the same call. <laughs> so I made Saturday a little cooler. And then Sunday, the marine layer seems to back off a little bit. Then the marine layer gets a little thinner Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. But what I did notice when you look at – I looked at all the ensembles from the uh, European, the Canadian, the GFS, that's the American model, and they all had the same kind of pattern where there's no big ridge coming next week, but um, there's just kind of this uh, kind of flat southwesterly flow overhead. And when that happens, we tend to have some sort of marine layer in place, so some sort of morning cloud, afternoon sun routine, but is it thicker, is it a little thinner, we'll see. Um, and there's a big upper level low way offshore that seems to want to stay out there, it doesn't seem to want to move over yeah. us. So I'm... I'm guessing this first week of Rose Festival and Memorial Day weekend, we're going to be dry. Kind of typical temps. I don't know, somewhere between you, 68 and 78 you know we call probably that? for a week. Do you know what that's Perfect called? Perfect weather. Perfect Goldy weather. Goldilocks zone. The Goldy oh, Goldilocks yeah. zone. Yeah. I think so. For most people. Oh, you know, some people love heat, though. I have people that say, oh, no, I want it to be 90. Nora. We love Nora. <laughs> Nora Kim, Hart, Shauna. but um, she wants it to be 90 every day. Oh, do they like it that warm too? Kim, Kim loves that, yeah. Oh, yeah. she's from Palm Springs. You know how weird they are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, weirdos. I think 70s. <laughs> 70s is what you want to see this time of year, right? It's like perfect spring, oh, early yeah. summer weather. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. So that's the plan. So basically, that's why we're saying it looks so quiet, folks. We just don't see a big cold upper level trough in the next week to 10 days. We also don't see a big hot ridge of high pressure in the next week to 10 days. So we think we are in the golden box zone. By the way, if you hear noise in the background, that is, that's a party going on at your place, Camilla, right? Yeah. They're Behind doing some, you. Something on the set. Do you know what they're doing on the set, Mark? They replaced that big, we call it the BAM monitor, oh, B-A-M. Oh, yeah. What does that stand for? Uh, it died last night. <laughs> Jeff? <laughs> Yeah, so we just for? we always have names for each of our monitors, and so um, ours is the weather monitor. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Named. Very. Yeah. yeah, we don't have a fun one. Yeah, the big, we don't. The other one is the big bleep monitor. Um, and then yeah. there's the the ham, the huge bleep <laughs> monitor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Very technical names here around the yeah. Fox Twelve studio. We're so great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It, it stretches yeah. out. My free, my previous station had a BAM, so nice. I think I think yeah. most stations do that. Yeah. So they're yeah. basically. I I just know I, I they were hauling this that huge thing out when I was coming in to do the bod, podcast in here, and I asked. I said, "Oh, can that go to my living room?" And he said, "Yeah, if you want it, it's broken." I said, "Never mind." Nice. Yeah. Moving on. So there okay. you go. So, so you yeah. you got your weather update now, and now we've got right. our sky update. What else do we have, Jeff? So so last week on the podcast, we were talking about those big fires burning up in Canada and how some of the, mm -hmm. the smoke mm -hmm. had drifted overhead in the northwest. We saw some hazy sky. I mean, that still is possible because those fires are still burning up there. Um, there obviously hasn't been any meaningful precipitation. Um, some of the uh, local researchers, I know our state climatologists, uh, they met virtually this week to talk about El Nino, fire season, our current state of the snowpack, and kind of what this all means for fire season this year. And some of the key notes that were taken away from the discussion was that because of the above average snowpack or above normal snowpack, that seems, generally speaking, to be putting fire season off by a few weeks. Um, obviously, things dried out pretty quickly with our abnormally warm middle part of the month, mm -hmm. May. Um, but they, they tend to believe based off of how the vegetation looks and soil moisture and other factors, obviously the snowpack and the runoff, uh, that things have been put off a little bit. So we may not see the fire season jumpstart. Um, but that being said, they're also, they also brought up El Nino. Remember we, a few weeks back on the podcast, we talked about El Nino. El Nino is when the sea surface temperatures in the Eastern Pacific ocean in the tropical region are warmer than average. That seems to be where we're trending toward. The past three years, we've been in a La Nina phase where the warmer water in the sea surface is on the western side of the Pacific Ocean in the tropics. 
This year, it seems to be trending east. This could impl have implications on how the weather plays out, obviously, later in the year. Uh, we may see more of a mild winter up in the northwest, a more active winter in the southwest. That's That tends to be how El Nino winters play out. But um, more broadly speaking, this could also mean that we could be facing some of the warmest temperatures globally on record. Uh, El Nino, we were under an El Nino in 2016. We had the warmest year on record globally that year. And so we could be, based off of this discussion, face one of our warmer summers, at least the, the last couple of months of summer in the Pacific Northwest. And that may lead to an exacerbated fire season. Think about warmer temperatures, tends to dry things out more effectively. Mm -hmm. um, I think these are all a lot, I mean, a lot of them are generalizations. You can't really predict exactly how a fire season is going to play out. Are we going to have a lot of lightning? That could lead to some spark ups. Right. Um, but you know, if we don't have any lightning, we may not see as many fire starts. So there are a lot of things that play into it. But um, let's, I mean, Mark, do you have any thoughts on that? And of course, Katie and Camilla yeah. uh, would love to hear your thoughts too. Yeah, I just think that it's, from my experience, it's just what happens during fire season, as you just alluded to. Do we get lightning storms, uh, 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 an upper level trough passes overhead, lightning, and then the ridge immediately rebounds and we have hot weather right after lightning? I've noticed that starts you know, then that gets things going. So if we have lightning and then we have a cool little trough pass through with three days of 50s and kind of drippy in the Cascades, then it's like, eh, it's not such a big deal. And that only has to happen like once every week and a half to kind of keep things tamped down. It seems like our quieter fire seasons have been when uh, temperatures are average or slightly above, but there's no big, huge, like big hot ridge with lightning. I mean, some summers we don't have much lightning in the mountains, so we will see how it goes. But it's all about, I think, what happens during the summertime. Katie, you're coming from Central a... Oregon. You were sorry, Camilla. Katie, you were there for no, a decade, great. and I would love mm -hmm. to kind of hear your thoughts. Like, how, what, do, what was it like living out there during some of the intense fire seasons? Um, and I just, I would like to hear your perspective on it. Well, from over there, it was always um, scary when we would have a wetter spring because everything would shoot up and then immediately dry out, and we would have all of this fuel. And so what the setup we have right here, right now, with everything all green and lush and then going into thunderstorm season, it was scary because a majority of the fire starts we had over there were from lightning. And like we, the one that Mark and I watched that last Monday where we had all that lightning up in the Clark County area, we would have had dozens of starts from that because of how um, that spring just gets all that kindling up there and ready and ready for it. So I immediately asked him, I'm like, what's going to happen? Are we like going to see anything? Cause I love lightning, but I hate when we get those fire stars cause people just, you know, lose so much from that. So, um, not having sort of the same setup here as over there, it's not as, as scary, but it was, we had to have people on call 24 hours because it was fire season, like mm. legit fire season. Everybody had an on-call time. My first live shot was at a lightning start fire that I ever did because it just, you know, you get, especially when those dry ones would come through when you would just see the crackle of everything out there. Um, it was, it was always a very, very busy season for us. People weren't supposed to take off vacation time because we all had to be on deck and we would get multiple fires. Like we would, we would have entire weather segments. We had a heat map on our weather software there where I could see all the heat signatures. And we only had one camera. We didn't have like 10, like we have here. So I had one camera that I would try and turn and point where we could see, you know, things going on because it was, it was, there was, it wasn't as much like, when here in the summer, it seems like we're, we don't have much to talk about right now. I was always prepping for fire. I had smoke forecasts ready. I had, you know, fire prediction sure. forecasts ready, like all that stuff ready to go for the summer because that's what I had to focus on and I had to pay attention to. And we would have the lightning tracker and we would be watching where those lightning strikes would happen and have people on the ready to head to those spots because we would have half a dozen starts in one rolling thunderstorm in one hour. And it would just be all hands on deck because it was insane. So busy. And then it would unfortunately ruin the summer because we would have horrible smoke and our entire August would just be socked under smoky yeah. skies because of all these fires. And they would stick around. Mark and I had a conversation about that where ones that were, you know, there would come back. They would, they would hang out 
and, and smolder. And then just like you said, you'd have those dry days and wind would come through and they would just pick right back up. Even if you hadn't seen anything in that area for a couple of days, we get the wind come in and all of a sudden something would start up and we'd look back at our map and see a group of lightning strikes in that area a couple of days before. So it wasn't, uh, it was a busy season for me over there. I should say that. I bet. Yeah. 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 Noah. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify something because uh, I think it was uh, one of our producers maybe over the weekend asking, so is it wildfire season in the Pacific Northwest? And I wasn't really sure how to answer that because typically, right, we say it starts in mid-May. Is that correct? Uh, typically, it's no, it depends on the area. Like in oh, Eastern okay. Oregon, they may say, okay, wildfire. And there's official and non-official definitions. And I was going to say, yeah. yeah, like wildfire season in Central Oregon probably is, depending on the year, declared like mid-May or early June. Often it's not officially wildfire season west of the Cascades to like early July. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, um, we would have our region, schedule. And it changes from year to year. Yeah. Yeah, our schedule would start in May. We would have a calendar May through October of people having to sign up for weekends and off times. It was It was every year, May through October. Gotcha. For example, so, oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, so for those of us west of the Cascades, who like, who makes that call? What agency? I think it's Oregon Department of Forestry. Oh, okay. I think so. And, and, and like I said, like right now, imagine right now if a fire tried to start. This is nothing like what we had two weeks ago when we had that dry east wind. Remember, suddenly there were a few right. little starts here and there. I mean, you, you would have a tough time getting a fire going in the woods right now. And that, and that would still be the case a week from now, even with more dry weather. It's just if it's relatively high dew points and there's no – it's all about that really dry easterly wind or hot temps. If you don't have both of those, fires spread slowly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so – Obviously, you know, the discussion, and we don't have a ton of time left, but I wanted to touch on the fact that we don't have a lot of rain coming. Um, maybe some isolated thunderstorms, mm-hmm. one could drift in, but the vast majority of us west of the Cascades are not going to see um, significant rain. So the gardens, you're just going to have to keep watering them. You're going to have to be persistent on that. Um, mm-hmm. Mark, we've, we've kind of talked about this a couple of times. Last, last year, um, we did, I mean, personally and you as well, we didn't have a great season in terms of like the fruiting like the fruiting trees that's right like Mm -hmm. uh it it was probably probably partially due to the late late snow that we had that record late snow in april um the the bees were not necessarily flying around as much around the flowers pollinating Um, exactly that was it rained mostly almost every day when it was pollination time for in my house last year yeah um and i just bring that up because i stepped out in the backyard past couple of days and my apple trees are going nuts. I have so many apples coming in right now. So nice. many cherries on the cherry tree out front. Oh, you better um, be sharing that love in the well, weather center. <laughs> I will, absolutely. But Mark's the guy. Like, I, I bring this up because I'm always curious what's happening out in Corbett because Mark has the real good trees. Mark, how is it going at your property? Actually, I haven't looked at the trees. I did see one pear tree. I just happened to glance. I've been busy trying to plant things. I've been trying to plant transplant some stuff I had started in the greenhouse outside while it's still cool before these next two days that are warmer. So... And we've got like, we're having a guy working on our chimney and we have the pool that still has no water in it because we haven't put the liner in. So I got all these little projects lined up. And so I haven't looked at the trees, but I just assume perfectly dry weather that there was great pollination. I would agree with you. And the blueberries are just now blooming. Okay. So that's going to be your homework. You're going to need to go in the backyard and check up on those things before our next podcast and (laughs) report back. Hey, I've got one more thing I I do want to add. I know we're just about out of time, even though I was the one that said, we need to wrap this up. Um, so one month from now, the European model, this is hardcore model talk, folks. The European model is going to have one of their regular upgrades. And this is a big model we use. Um, and the, the the ensembles of the European, that's the big change. They're going to go from an 18-kilometer resolution to 9-kilometer resolution, wow. which means the the quality of all that, like the snow maps in the winter, the precipitation maps, it'll be the, as high resolution as the operational run, much higher than you get from the GFS or the Canadian models. Um, and they were already, you know, 18 kilometers wasn't, was nothing to sneeze at, but nine kilometer resolution. And there'll be a hundred ensemble members instead of 50. Wow. So I don't know what those charts we use are going to look like. There's going to be too many numbers, oh, wow. too many, but we'll see. But the, yeah, more information they, they're, they're changing the way they, they, um, uh, input the data, which is good. And also the, uh, the, the, the days, day one through 46, or I should say day 16 through 46, what I call the weekly runs of the Euro, it's run twice a week to see kind of what's out there at week two and three and four. Um, they're going to be doing that daily is now. So lots more wow. info. You, you can't have too much model info, right? That was Very already exciting. your favorite model. And now I feel like all of us have to jump on the bandwagon. 
<laughs> well, it's watch out US, GFS. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, the GFS has nothing comparable with the ensemble. So, you know, <laughs> there you go. That's what we should do for like Halloween costumes one year. We'll dress up as a <gasps> type of a uh, computer model. Yeah. Yes. I'm okay, okay. But wait. I think you've gone how too would, far for even how me. Would we do, no, I know how you do the Euro. I would just like dress up as like rain. It always overdoes the rain. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's just oh, the way we look at the maps. Don't offend Mark. Don't offend Mark. I don't Mark. know, uh, Mark. It always goes heavy on precip. It is a little high, but it's also the way that it shows it kind of backing up against the Cascades. So that's, did uh-huh. you guys notice one of those products, I have it shifted over like permanently. One oh, of the European yeah. graphs. Because it's it thinks Portland's like practically in the Cascade foothills. Oh, okay, all right. That, Maybe a funny. little, a little. That's funny. <laughs> Camilla calling Mark out in his Euro model. I'm, I don't just no. Basic it's okay. Observations. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it goes a little slightly heavy, but at least it's a known bias as opposed to that GFS that who knows what it's calling for what day. Well, it's just all over the place, like like a fire hose. You right? know what I would be for <laughs> Halloween, and that would be the Nam Nest. So I'm just going to put that oh, out there. Oh, that's right. Jeff the three kilometer. His yeah. His damn nest. Yep. I hear they're going to. Is that the one that they're shutting down? Just kidding. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> just kidding. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for joining us for another episode of the Fox 12 Weather Podcast. Again, we're trying to do this weekly. It really depends on kind of how things are going in Mark's backyard. Um, but it should calm down next week. So we should be back. Until then, enjoy the pleasant conditions. We're going to be entering that Goldilocks zone once again. We'll talk Mm -hmm. to you soon. And have a great weekend, too. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us. Please tell us.